Hey gang, welcome back to Inverted Pursuits Laboratory. And this week we are actually working on a um, kit rocket. This is actually the first kit rocket I've ever built. Um, this, well, I should rephrase that. First high powered kit rocket I've ever built. Uh, built plenty of Estes kits as can be seen in the background over here. Um, but this is a Mach 1 Speed Demon. Uh, it is a 38 millimeter uh, outside diameter. It's actually a BT-60 body tube, which is a 38 millimeter outside and it's thin walled uh, to the inside. So it does not take a 38 millimeter on the inside of the body tube. But then it has a 29 millimeter motor mount tube, which I've already assembled. But what we're gonna talk about today is the fact that this is a split fin rocket. So I've got uh, the two fins. As you can see, I've clamped them together here. This is a fairly standard way for holding the fins together. Um, but I wanted to show you guys how the uh, Mach 1 kit calls out for gluing in their uh, split fins. So one of the first things we'll take a look at real quick is the motor mount tube here. So the motor mount tube, as you can tell, I made a few mistakes on it. So it's got some interesting quirks and flops on it, but it does work. Um, so this motor mount tube actually has four centering rings, all four of which are glued on to the bot to the motor mount tube before we glue this into the body tube. Now this is a little different than the way I usually do things. I tend to usually leave the uh, rear one uh, till very last, and I also haven't even taken the tape all the way off this because I just finished gluing it together uh, last night and just haven't taken the time. Of course, then I drop it. Um, but this, this body tube, there, the motor mount tube, um, is, uh, got the four centering rings and then the fins actually sit in between these four. And so we'll actually have to go ahead and drill holes in the body tube to, um, add in the internal fillets for the fins. So we'll end up drilling a hole on either side of where the fins go all the way around the rocket, which we're not gonna do just yet because I want to do that after I've glued the motor mount in. But I wanted to talk about the fact that where all these little green dots I've added are is where I'm gonna drill holes. Then I'll tape off the body tube and the fins. I'll inject epoxy down in along the root fillet. Um, where the fin and the motor mount tube meet and we will uh, continue on with the epoxying but uh, and I'll also be doing that with some syringes I've got some little syringes to pump the epoxy in with but for now let's go ahead and glue in the motor mount tube and then get on with this uh, split fin mounting um, if you can see we have uh, glued the motor um, mount in place so it's fully in there and the fin slots have a little bit of cleanup they need here and there but what we're going to go ahead and do is where i marked all these green dots and they're hard to see they got little green dots here next to every fin slot that's where i'm actually going to end up ejecting the epoxy once the uh the fins get uh tacked in place so then i can actually glue the root fillet in there so let's go ahead and drill these holes and do a little cleanup on the whole get up. Okay, now that we have all the holes drilled and everything cleaned up, the next thing is to go ahead and test fit all of our fins. So I'm gonna do that by just sliding the fins in place, which I might still have to do some more cleanup work here. Uh, yeah, I am going to have to do more cleanup. Let's just try another fin real quick, see if they're all a little different. Not quite, things aren't quite as perfect as I'd like them to be. I'm gonna end up making every fin pretty much a custom fit. Just took a chunk of my fingernail off with that. 
file. Oh well. Tis the way it goes. Alright, let's try just cleaning. That up a bit more. I can get it to fit that way now. Almost. One uh, out of a lot of fins to get to fit. So the next one is that back one. And now we make the fins actually stay in place with these uh, popsicle sticks. So I popsicle stick either side as you saw on my other fin set. And then I'm clamping them together to keep them perfectly square to one another. And I'm gonna do this on every single fin set all the way down. All right, let's get to this next step of gluing. So pull all the fins out. This might be a slight struggle. So I'm just gonna take, like I have many times before on my channel and just run a little bit of epoxy on this edge. And I always make sure that I am uh, using my epoxy wisely because epoxy can be very expensive. So I'm very particular about when I mix up a batch of epoxy that I'm gonna have enough work to finish it all off. Uh, which today I don't perfectly have enough to finish off my entire thing of epoxy, but dang am I close. Oh, I like to go ahead and take my fins, my fins jigged up and set them upright. So I actually have it standing upright on the table. My fin jig guarantees that all the fins are going to be square around the exterior of the body. And then the popsicles ensure that the uh, rear fins will be perfectly in line with the forward fins. So with that, we have the initial step here and my fins are actually attached, which is a huge deal. Um, I'm kind of amazed they're actually attached. All right, so it is now the next day and the glue is dry. So I can remove my alignment jig that kept all my fins at 120 degrees. And now I can remove all of these glorious clamps and get a look at, oh, let's set that down. Get a look at the rocket in all its glory. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna check all of these holes and make sure they are all clear of epoxy since I'm actually gonna be filling through those little sprue holes. Okay, um, I'm gonna need my coupler section here and the upper body section. Okay, so I'm using the upper body section and a coupler to extend it back so that I can get my fins hanging off the back end here. I'll back that up real quick before I go ahead and start messing with uh, epoxy and tape and So now we're just wanting to put some tape down in the rough area where our fillets were end up being. All right, now we take our syringe full of epoxy and we go in these oh so tiny holes that I'm now realizing are not very big. And we're going to go ahead and eject some epoxy. That is not working. I would like it to be. Which is actually running on the wrong side of where I'd like it to be running at the moment. Okay, 
So we're going to end up with some epoxy fillets starting up in here. All right, so we are back. I have finished doing all of the uh, internal fillets and I have gone ahead and removed the tape, cleaned a bunch of stuff up and I've actually put new tape down. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is put all of the external fillets on this uh, Mach 1 and then we will be done with the split fin, uh, fin can. We'll do it on all three sides. Uh, we're only gonna start with one because you can only do really one at a time, but Let's go ahead and get going. All right, so we're gonna be doing our external fillets here as we finish it up. Um, I have decided in all my infinite wisdom that the back of a Sharpie is the tool I'm going to, oh dang it, I just put my finger in that. Uh, the tool I am using for spreading my fillets. Uh, it just makes the radius I want on my fillets. Um, I imagine there are way better tools to use, but this is what I have in it working great so far um, for other areas. Even allows me to pick it up, the material. Oh. So I run up and down the body here. All right, let's get the other side here real quick. Just like that, I have some very messy fillets. Now I can come back in like 35, 40 minutes uh, when the epoxy is still tacky and take all the tape off and it should leave super clean and crisp edges. And I will come back and film that for you all. But as uh, we go on here, um, I am doing something a little different than I would normally do. And I am doing all of the fillets at once. Um, it's a little different than the way I would usually do things where I just do one at a time. But because this is a 38 millimeter body tube and these fillets are tiny, I do mean tiny when I say tiny, they are small. Um, it seems that there is enough surface tension within the epoxy to hold the shape and they don't run because they're just itty bitty little fillets. You can do the same thing usually with like Elmer's glue on rockets this scale and the Estes kits. Come here. So, seems to be working quite well for what I want. There's gonna be a little bit of clean up there. All right, clean off the back end of my Sharpie here. That is now, partially epoxy coated. And then do a quick once over. And just like that, we're done. So I'll be back in a little bit to show you pulling the tape off and that'll finish out what we're doing. All right, gang, we're back. Um, the Epoxy is decently tacky. I can kind of gently detent it. My Sharpie is sticky. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and pull the tape off at this point. Um, so pulling the tape off now just gives us a good uh, point to be able to deal with uh, making crisp epoxy lines while the epoxy is not fully set. You can see how we're just peeling that off very gently. Um, goal is to not mess up these 
very nice fillets we've put together. Uh, you can see some of my rough stuff underneath. Uh, there'll be some areas that definitely need some cleanup with um, a file or a Dremel just to remove excess epoxy from a few locations, but that's just part of standard cleanup. This is just helping us make some very crisp lines and actually keep our rocket fairly clean before we get to any of the cleanup steps. But just like that, we have the rocket done and we have our split fins fully installed. You can see there's a few areas on here that have excess epoxy in between them. This one doesn't, that's what I want it to look like. So I'll have to come back in here with a file and clean that up. But I'm not overly concerned about that at the moment. Um, but that is how uh, to do a Mach 1 split fin. I did actually follow the instructions Mach 1 has published on how to do their split fin kits. Um, this was my first time doing split fins and I found it actually to be fairly straightforward after reading their instructions a few times through. I'll post a link to the instructions uh, in the description box below, but if you have any questions, please leave them for me in the comments. And thanks for watching, gang.